have really good news, you guys. I have fixed dynamic tone mapping on LG OLED. Um, but here's the thing. We cannot make it track the OTF 100%, of course. It's not going to be possible, because if, if it did, it would look exactly like HGIG. Now, I've been hard at work for now about like a week or so, and it's done. So now, if you play a game, and you did my episode 20 image calibration, so you're using HIG and you, you, you're loving it, right? Then this video isn't for you. This is an improvement on top of that calibration, because that is very accurate, very good looking, very clear, very contrasty. It looks like it's intended to. And that's how I'm going to be playing. But for everyone else that wants to use dynamic toe mapping, because they think that HIG is just horrible, I've now improved HJG so much that it looks like HJG but with added brightness to the mid-tones and uh, the only thing that had to suffer was black level detail. Now that's a problem, right? A lot of people won't like the fact that black level detail has now been slightly more crushed than before and it's now darker than before and uh, I will just say it like this, if you're that type of dude that wants to use dynamic tone mapping most likely you don't care about using too much sharpness, too much color. I've tried to dial back the panel's issues as much as I could, but just know it's like taking a rubber band and then stretching it back and tensing it up and then sitting like this. That's dynamic tone mapping right now. Before, dynamic tone mapping did this. Woo! <laughs> just went, boosted everything and didn't care for shit. And now, I've grabbed some of the image strands and like, oh! <laughs> and I'm still holding on. It, it's insane, man. <laughs> so you get the idea, right? We can't really get a perfect image. In the end, the game here, some stuff had to go <laughs> or get ruined in the in the process of making this happen. So, how does it look? Because I'm teasing you. This is HDIG running on Hitman World of Assassins. And this game doesn't have good HDR. Well, it's good HDR, but it's not... It's not the impressive mid-tone luminance that people would want. So the sand there doesn't have any HDR at all. So it's just 250 nits. Full screen, basically, right now, <laughs> essentially. So, we want more, right? We want to use dynamic tone mapping. Well, I don't want to, but you want to. <laughs> you get the idea. Time to inject my finalized dynamic tone mapping. Boop! It's that easy, man. Here we are. It's, uh, it was a long time in the making. And I will also, of course, show off a comparison. So, we are gonna go up to the top here. And we're gonna start with some comparison shots. I will leave timestamps so that you can just skip through this part if you want. But I recommend you listen to what I have to say first. Okay, but I can't force you. This image is really good because I showed this off in the last video when I was talking about the blue-black arrays and I was talking about how the mid-tones get washed out and raised when using dynamic tone mapping and how that's a problem. So, if you were using 150 default settings and you were using dynamic tone mapping, that image would look like this. So now you have all of that wash out here that I was talking about. Um, and it, I don't know, man, I don't know what to tell you. You can clearly see here that there's just, it's washed out like hell and beyond because it's just, you know, pushing everything. It's pushing the highlights and it's just, honestly, it's just breaking everything in its path to make everything look brighter. It's trying to push everything at once, every single color, every single contrast element all the mid-tones, all the shadow detail, it wants every pixel on the screen to push panel peak all the time, if possible. That's why everything looks a lot brighter. But we have to dial down the mid-tones. So, we clean everything, and now it looks great. It's a lot brighter than the HIG equivalent. Even for those things that are supposed to have specular detail in very specific places, now, game optimizer with the settings that we're doing with dynamic tone mapping kind of ruins that effect, but it's still there, it's just not as good looking as in HGG. HGG is very precise, 
because it's tracking the OTF near the highlight so fucking good, man. And I can't do that with my eyes and just putting settings on the display. But it's wildly better than this. Like, this is insanely bad in comparison to what I have done. So, HDRG, and then using dynamic tone mapping, it's horrible. You can see it, it wrecks the entire image. But what about my settings? Looks good. So, uh, you can always try this out, but just know you will have to kind of ruin the calibration that you have done for HDRG. So, I don't necessarily recommend doing this. Here we go. What are the settings? Because heck, it's brighter and I like how it looks. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit more dim because we're not being able to push white stabilizer in cinema. But it, it's about the same. So, we're going to talk about it. What are the settings? And it is very, very, very easy to talk about actually. You're going to go brightness. You're going to go 100. On. Detail. On. Oh, sorry. I need to remove this. Expression Enhancer Detail, Video Range Limited, Motion Eye Care On. What is Motion Eye Care? Well, if you're uh, playing a very dark game, uh, or you're about to be flashbanged, the TV won't uh, pull like its excessive brightness as much. It will dial it back very quickly to save your eyes slightly. That's the only thing it does. So if you're playing a very bright game, nothing will happen. But if you're playing a dark game, and you're looking into a black wall, and then right into a very bright 10,000 nit light. It will dim the light faster. Uh, not in a way that it looks like ABL, but in a way that it just won't hurt your eyes. Maybe it'll just dial it down by like 100 nits, but it will still make a difference to save your eyes. Okay, so limited video range on the TV. I've talked about this before. Don't ask about this anymore. You have videos on my channel that will explain it for an hour straight. Okay. Adobe RGB, warm 50, two point method, high point, plus 20, plus 17, plus 33. We're gonna go low point, minus 29, minus 27, minus 35. Okay, nice. We're gonna go 22 point code value, and we're gonna do the same thing that we've done before. Minus 10, minus 10, minus 5. Minus 10, minus 8, minus 10, minus 12, and the last one, minus 10, minus 12. You're done. So, what does this do? Well, you're gonna go 22 point code value, and it doesn't matter if you're in SDR, then it will be called signal level, but if you're on HDR, it will be called code value, and it will also deviate. If you're on PC and using HDR, it might be called signal level. <clears throat> It's the same thing though, some of the 42 inch monitors out there, depending on region, I also say signal level. Don't care about the name, just know that if it's a signal level or code value, it's the right menu to go into. And then you're gonna go all the way down until you're at the lowest point, and then you're gonna be changing one, two, three, four levels all the way from the bottom. And don't only change those uh, to the correlated ones that I did in the video. And you'll be golden, man. Make sure that you also do the two point methods, the low point and the high point to align the image calibration. Uh, and make sure that you are using Worm 50. We have removed the blue tint, the green tint, the blue issue near black, and we have removed everything else that just makes the image look horrible with Worm 50. So it won't really be the Worm 50 that you're expecting. Um, okay. Yes, now we're gonna talk about the settings in Game Optimizer that are extremely important to make it look correct. So, uh, it's gonna become a little um, hard now to understand some things. So, keep in mind, we're playing in 60 Hertz right now. I will explain in a, in a second, but 60, 60 FPS gaming right now, VRR, no 120 hertz signal. We're in standard preset uh, uh, game genre. Okay, nice. We're using standard. We have VRR on. We have PS5 120 hertz on. We're not enabling any of these. We have fine tuned dark areas on zero. We go picture. We go seven on black stabilizer, plus 15 on white stabilizer. 
Game Contrast 100, we do Game Black level 45, which is gonna do some black level crush, but we need that to be there. And then Adjust Game Sharpness 28 is what I really like when I'm boosting the panel. Um, don't listen to what people say, uh, this will enhance games that look blurrier, lower than 4K native, it will add in a lot of filament and it will look really nice with the sharpness. Uh, but near black will become even slightly darker when this is styled up from zero, keep that in mind. And game color depth had to be at 46 to counteract some of the issues near the color peaks to not make it look weird and deviating. It looks the same as when using the HIG calibration essentially. It might be slightly more color even this, but it's very good looking. Dynamic tone mapping on, okay. Now, here is one problem that we will have. And uh, it will be hard to kind of do live. So I will just try my best, honestly, at trying to resolve this issue. So I guess, yeah. Let's go into Cyberpunk 2077. Good. There we go. So it's just minus 10. Uh, so instead of doing minus 18 as it would be in the original calibration video that was accurate Now it's minus 10 because we've dialed down the 45 on black level and we've changed the black stabilizer So we cannot do as big of a leap and this will preserve and fix the black level uh, as much as possible anyways And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe so that we can gain more popularity on the channel branch out to newer audiences and help others out in the community. Thank you guys so much for watching and I love you guys so much. I will answer every single comment as per usual and I'll see you guys in the next one.